Mic check two. All right. How's everybody? It's been a long time since I went on the Sunday drive, so we're going to take a drive today. Make sure you got your seatbelt on. You got your seatbelt on? Okay. Just checking. It seems like every week I get somebody to knock on our door trying to sell us something. Young lady sitting on the curb over here. She's waiting on the ride to come pick her up. You know how they do in the summer and the spring breaks. They go on these trips and make money for two weeks. And she's selling solar energy. Uh, solar energy. And uh, she said, we use the power from the sun. I'm like, well, that's free, ain't it? Uh, she didn't want to hear that. Uh, but anyway, how's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, this morning we had a wonderful service. Uh, just tremendous. You know, God's been graciously blessing us with uh, visitors and new people. And that's something we don't take for granted. You know, it's just not automatic that you open the doors and people show up. But God's been blessing us and uh, we thank God for that, that someone will come and you know, listen to the sermons I preach and uh, join in with what we do. Uh, and so I'm, I'm so thankful because there was a time, uh, you know, you talk about the ebbs and flows of ministry and church growth. Uh, and, you know, there was a time when it was just ebbing and it wasn't flowing. And I understand the spiritual dynamics and all involved in that. Uh, sometimes God's got to clean the house. Uh, one man said every now and then God's got to flush the toilet. I understand that, but we work so hard to get people in and we believe God for every soul. Uh, it's funny, we'll believe God for the vilest of sinners, that God will change them. Uh, we'll believe God for anybody, that God will touch them. And sometimes God tells you and I, you know, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? Uh, I've already anointed somebody else. You need to get up and uh, get about the business of the kingdom. And sometimes that's what we have to do, get up and be about the business of the kingdom. Uh, I want to give you all an update on my mother-in-law. We've been praying for her. Her name's Christine Payne. Well, her surgeries are all done. They thought they'd have to take a kidney out. Uh, they open her up. They do not have to take a kidney that's the God we serve. God's much bigger than cancer. Uh, they just cut out a small piece of her small intestine, sewed it back together. And uh, we're, we're, she's in recovery. She's uh, My wife is back home and she's and the mother-in-law is doing fine. Uh, that's, that's the God we serve. That's why we serve him. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or imagine. And so, but keep them in your prayers, my mother and father-in-law, Sam and Christine Payne. Uh, they live in Florida down there. But keep them in, keep them in your prayers. And I'll thank all y'all who have been praying. Uh, I have another assignment. Uh, uh, my brother, my youngest brother, Corey, uh, dealing with some uh, cancer issues. And so, I'm asking you to help me pray for Corey. Uh, my brother, uh, God did it once; He could do it again. You know, He healed one; He could heal anybody. Uh, help me lift him up in uh, in prayer. But we're headed back tonight, and we're excited about church. You know, uh, you know what brings excitement to church: people, visitors, converts, disciples, uh, and to me, you know, living for God is a joy. And I want to talk to you who, in your heart and in your mind, your attitude, and the way you carry yourself, it's as though living for God is a punishment. Listen, serving God is not a punishment. Prayer is not a punishment. Church on Sunday morning and Sunday evening and Wednesday night, that's not a punishment. Not when you know God like you're supposed to know Him. Not when you're in right relationship with God. That's not a punishment. You know, it's a joy. And I, you know, I, I look forward to going back to church and worshiping God and clapping and singing and 
fellowshipping with the saints and seeing what God's going to do and allowing hearts and souls to be changed. It's when we go through these dry places, it's when we go through these dry seasons that we think the things of God are a punishment. You know what I mean? Oh, why do I got to go back? Why? Oh, man, why don't people just do right? But once we're in a fruitful season, when we're in a fruitful time, man, the sun's shining and God is good and uh, the weather's perfect. But the question is, how do we get fruit? How do we become fruitful? How do we stay in these times of fruitfulness? Jesus, he gives us the uh, a secret. Abiding, abiding, abiding in him, abiding. If you, if you abide in me, like the branch cannot bring forth fruit of itself unless it abides. You've got to abide in Jesus. You got to be attached to him, connected to him. You know, he's the air you breathe. He's the water you drink. He's your all in all. He's your reason. He's your purpose. He's, he's your everything. You've got to be a person that abides in Jesus. You know, the kingdom of God ain't got much room for, uh, <laughs> what Stevie wanted to say, part-time lovers. No, he's got to be your all in all. This is why he so eloquently states, unless you, unless you hate mother, father, sister, brother, a uh, wife, uh, throw husbands in there too. What you want to hate is everything. Everything pales in comparison to my relationship with Jesus. This is abiding. Everything pales. You remember when you were dating? By the way, my wife and I just celebrated 32 years, but I still remember when we were dating. We begin. We've been together for 36. We've been married for 32. Uh, when you were dating way before texting and uh, social media when you're dating. Well, if you go too far back, the only way you could court is you had to go over that house. Nobody had a phone. But even when we had those big rotary dial phones, when you were dating, you couldn't wait to call. Sometimes you weren't saying anything on the phone, just listening to each other breathe. You spent more time saying, you say something. No, you say something. You say something. No, you call me. And so uh, you spent more time doing that. But to know that that other person was on that other line, on the other end, sometimes that was just enough. That that was just enough knowing uh, that they were there. This is abiding. Abiding in Jesus, knowing he's there, knowing you're connected. You know, talking to him, telling him your innermost secrets, your desires, your, you know, just staying connected to Jesus. Because think about this. In heaven, we're going to be with Jesus forever. I mean, there is no time. We're going to be, we're going to step from time into the eternity. And you're going to be with him forever, forever, ever, forever, ever, ever. Get to know him now abide in him and let him abide in you and I might throw in there let him use you let God use you to do something supernatural in your city on your job in your neighborhood in your family let him use you to do something supernatural can I talk about family for just a minute great uh, I'm getting ready to call my uh, nieces and nephews I try to keep in touch with the family. You know, there's so many of us. When you have 11 kids, there's so many. There's so many nieces, nephews. Now, great, great nieces, great nephews, and so many. But to the best of my ability, I try to keep up with them, to uh, encourage them, uh, to strengthen them, to let them know no matter what they're going through. Uh, there's an uncle out here in Texas that, that cares about them and prays for them. And... Uh, wishes God's best for them and so there's some of you need to reconnect with your family there's some of you need to connect uh, with your family there's some of you need to mend some broken uh, relationships in the family don't wait on them you do it you mend you fix it you do something 
that's going to strengthen, build, help, and encourage the family. Oh, I got a train coming. I got a train coming. Uh, let's see. The red lights are blinking. And the bars are down. Okay. All indications point to the fact that the train is coming. So let me turn. And, okay, I hear it now. So let me turn down this street right here. I don't have a GoPro yet. It's just my cell phone on a selfie stick. And uh, they keep moving and sliding. It may not be the best of quality. Uh, and so uh, please pardon me till we get things built up where I can get me a, a GoPro. By the way, to all the subscribers, to all the viewers, if you viewed it one time, or if you went back and saw something that was funny and you went back and viewed it 10 times or 100 times, I wanna thank you. Uh, all I wanna do on this channel is just help some people, encourage some people, lift up some people. Why do you say thank you? Not only was it my 32nd anniversary last Thursday, but it was the one year anniversary of this channel, A Moment with Marvin. I launched it on my 31st anniversary. So it's been a year. It's been a year. It's been a lot of videos, a lot of encouragement. Uh, and I listen, and I enjoy doing this. I'm not trying to be a YouTuber out there, some type of sensation. I'm not trying to be the latest, greatest. I'm not trying to keep up with anybody. Uh, this is just me uh, with a cell phone and whoever wants to listen, tune in, what have you. Uh, just want to help somebody, encourage somebody, uh, bless somebody. And I hope and trust and pray that this little old channel in, in some way has been a blessing. It, it's mind boggling to me that from this little cell phone here in Temple, Texas, it can go around the world. You know, Honduras, China, uh, all over the United States, other places, South America, Africa. Are you kidding me, for real? That this little thing can go and uh, just want to help and uh, encourage people. But it's been one year. And uh, the, the channel's been growing. The channel's been increasing. And I'm just here to encourage the body of Christ the, and, the, the, and the, people of, the people of God. Again, I'm not trying to be, you know, somebody uh, famous, but if this can encourage you, if it didn't encourage you, if any one of the episodes I've done encourage you, well, praise God, mission accomplished. If And uh, there's some people that have <laughs> seen the channel that haven't seen me in 35 years when I was in college. Uh, by the way, I went to Bethune-Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida, the greatest university in all this fair land. You say, Ma, if you got a degree, absolutely, class of 85, baby. Uh, but anyway, that's neither here nor there because all the things I do outside of the kingdom of God pale in comparison to God using my life for his glory and in his kingdom to preach his precious gospel and to spread this gospel around the world. We've got a few trips we're gonna go on. Uh, we're gonna be heading to Man, where are we going? I'm trying to focus on driving and not getting too distracted. Um, but we already went to Mexico. Pastor Rosario, Pastor Vaz, myself, Pastor Mitchell, and the contingent. You might have seen the Mexico video. Uh, but we've got some other trips we're going to go on. Some places I've been, some places I've never been. And uh, we're going to Bangalore, India. Never been to India. And so we're looking forward to that, the thought and the opportunity of being able to preach the gospel in India. Uh, it's mind boggling to me that we can come from that small church on 4th Street in Killeen, Texas, next to Ricketts Bakery. That we can come from that small place and God could use our life around the world. It's grown now. But that's all right now. That's all for now. Want to just end and I'm asking you all to keep us in your prayer. Uh, uh, that the fruit will remain. God is blessing us. I'm at the church now. And God is bringing increase. And pray for the sick, my brother Corey. Continue to pray for my mother-in-law, Christine. And also for my uh, father-in-law, Sam. Many other people. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And uh, we're believing God for fruit in your life. So that's all. God bless you. And thanks for li uh, listening. And looking. Goodbye.